Oh, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we are working on our virtual GPU. And today's topic is trying to do a 3D model render with OpenGL. So we have been working on this virtualized graphics card. So I've written a driver and we've, we've taken this like virtual machine, QEMU, and we've extended this thing with a PCI card um, that accepts commands on a PCI, like on the PCI bus, right? Or we have a kernel driver that like knows how to talk to this thing, um, as well as an OpenGL driver that is in progress that knows how to talk to the kernel to dispatch commands to the GPU to do things. What happens is like the PCI device that we've implemented, he'll like see like, hey, this guy has like given me a program to run and he's gonna, he wants me to run them on these inputs and he can like, do like triangle rasterization based off of that, right? So we have like a typical OpenGL application. And what he is doing right now at this moment in time is he's trying to render a triangle. So if we run our test app, we have a very slow implementation of this thing, but he's calling GL clear, which is, you know, clearing the background at varying levels of green. And then he's got this like one triangle that he's rendered that goes like deep into the screen with like projected coordinates, as well as a fragment shader that runs on that triangle. I'm um, drawing stripes according to like sine of X uh, or sine of Z, I think. Now, uh, he crashes sometimes. Don't really know what's going on there. We'll figure that out at some point. Maybe, maybe we won't. Maybe she's born with it. Um, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Anyways, today's, today's goal is to extend that demo to go to something that looks like this. So this is an OpenGL app that's rendering the Blender Monkey. We've like render, given a texture on it and stuff. Um, I want to be able to render this demo. And I think if we can do this, then we've gone to like a pretty good spot in our like understanding of what a GPU has to do in order to run like a normal OpenGL app. Um, and so today what I wanna work, look at is taking this OpenGL demo that we have somewhere else, kind of running it on our GPU and just seeing where it falls over. I think that we're not gonna hit like the texturing aspect of this today. I'm looking more for, can we render a 3D model that looks coherent in any way, shape or form? Uh, so that is the plan, that's the plan. So I think that the, the, what we wanna do is we wanna like create a test case. Surely like the compilation of shaders for our GPU will fall over because there are probably some commands that this is going to use that we haven't implemented, i.e. we haven't done any matrix multiplication yet and surely our implementation of this will involve some. Um, we also have no way to specify uniforms. So like what happens when you render that, when, that scene we were rendering, um, for every point in this scene, we are multiplying that point hand wavy by the same matrix, right? So we, we say, hey, OpenGL, here's a matrix. Please just run this on everything. Um, and we have, that's what those are called uniforms. We have no way of interacting with those right now. So I'm sure that that's gonna cause some problems for us. Um, then like once like we have managed to create this thing without crashing, uh, we are then gonna have to run this thing without crashing, which is gonna be uh, another problem. And then hopefully we see something pretty at the end, hopefully. Uh, so I think we start, we start by probably just copying the existing demo that we have from another project into our test case and just kind of see where that takes us. So we are looking at Swayland client. I believe that we have this like model renderer thing who works with OpenGL. Uh, he's expecting to have some sort of G OpenGL bindings, but once he's in there, he just creates uh, a vertex and fragment shader. He creates a transform and calls rotate, but here, okay, so he compiles and links a program with like classic OpenGL shader stuff. And then where is like our render? He just calls, use this uniform, use this texture and do some drawing. Yeah, okay, so this looks like we can probably start here. So I think that we've actually like copy pasted this project in before. Um, when we were trying to do like no OpenGL fixed shader pipeline. So there might be some conflicts in here, but that's okay. So let's get this and this out of the way. I don't think those are like dead as for sure. And let's try to edit this model renderer, I guess, to not do any texturing. Maybe we start by just trying to use him as is. And then it, we can kind of pull out the stuff that we don't want. Um, I think what we could do here is 
we can build this thing and experiment with it on a existing GPU. So QEMU has a software GPU for us, and we can just kind of use that first until we have a test case that kind of looks okay. And then we can kind of like move on from there and try to strip it down until it looks like something that we could use on our, our implementation. Um, let's just do this for now. GL is equal to something that looks like this. And then we are not going to be able to use STB image here. So we're just going to kind of disable this image stuff. Disable the texturing stuff. Um, okay. Which means we're not going to use textures here. No texture here. And then our fragment shader, let's just, uh, not sample from this texture, but instead just use the UV coordinates as the color. So can we do like UV 0, 1.0 or something? That should be like a good initial test case. So that builds, which is good. And can we like run our virtual machine and just kind of see what happens if we try to run this app? So I don't think we need these windows down here right now. And I kind of want this to be vertical. There we go. And we run this on card one. Card one. Oh, card one is ours. We actually want this on card zero. Sorry. Card zero is the, uh, the one that is already implemented. He's mad actually about something here. This is surprising to me. I've never seen this before. Uh, where he thinks, hey, I'm, I'm failing to set up my monitor parameters. That's really weird. Very interesting. I wonder what's causing that. We're seeing error set CRTC. Is it because I didn't click here first? No, this is a, there, this is available. Oh, hold on. It's because I changed the width and height. That's probably relevant in some way. I was trying to fix a little bit of like an annoying problem it, where it kind of renders off the corner of the screen, but it seems like it's okay. Now, what I'm confused about now is why the fuck am I seeing the old behavior? Because we didn't actually use the model renderer. That would do it. So we have to construct this thing with like this. And then I think we just call renderer.render. I'm pretty sure that's it. So we'll still clear the background. And then I think instead of doing this, we just call this. I think. Uh, probably we need to try this. And then he's mad that render requires some sort of argument. So he wants the aspect. We'll call it 1.0 for now because we don't really give a shit. We don't really care. Okay, there we go. So we have something now. Now we are noticing uh, that the depth sorting is not working correctly. So can we do like, uh, I think it's like this, enable depth testing is my recollection of the right answer here. No. Uh, we'll get some clues if we go. Um, how do I do this? How do we do this? We can look at Swayland client, our, our test app. And in here, I think somewhere we set up some like default OpenGL parameters here. So we set that we enable depth test and set the depth function to GL less. Which 
I thought was the default, but maybe not. Still no good. Still no dice. Did we request a death buffer when creating the context? Might be the problem. Yeah, I guess that's a, there's a good chance that we have made... We've, like, initialized our OpenGL context without a depth buffer. That seems, like, kind of possible. Uh, because I think that the way that our initialization works here is we ask for a, like, buffer from, like, this library called GBM, who lives in Mesa. And we then feed that into, like, our OpenGL context with, like, EGL create window surface. Hmm. I thought that the depth buffer is supposed to exist by default. But maybe we have to ask... Uh, EGL, no depth buffer. Like, am I crazy? Uh, the smallest depth buffers of at least a particular size. Yeah, I think that there's a good chance that we have to do, like, something like that. The smallest depth of at least the specified size is preferred. If the desired size is zero, the frame buffer configurations with no depth buffer are preferred, the default value is zero. So here, I guess we do this. Uh, which he's then mad at. Presumably because he can't, presumably because that, that configuration doesn't exist. Well, he's saying set CRTC is the problem. Which means that we got through EGL initialization. I wonder if it's that the frame buffer that we're getting now is, like, has a depth attachment. Which maybe is a problem. So we're calling like, yo, I want the buffer object handle to this thing. Well, it seems like it should be okay. It'd be interesting to see why it's failing. Um. So let's just confirm here. If I do, if I comment that line out and I run this again. It works kind of fine. Oops, wrong one. Now, like, works fine is strong, but, I mean, there's definitely, like, something rendering. Now, if we do the same thing where we say, give me a depth buffer. Oh, we're also chilling? Okay. Um, now he's not drawing the monkey at all, which is a little odd, for sure. But we're not failing anymore. Um, okay. I'm just going to confirm that if I don't specify GLS, does he look okay? Why is it back to failing now? What the fuck is going on? Yeah, there's, there's something going on here where, I, where this set CRTC, which is like configure the frame buffer for output. Um, that's like failing sometimes. And I don't understand why. Test app dev dri card zero. Can we look at like why that is happening? I would love to see that. So... I think that this thing will return an error, maybe. Let's see. So let's go to, like, libdrm, which is kind of like the low-level uh, library for interacting with 
GPU kernel calls, I guess, is the best way to call it. And can we look for a set CRTC in here? Uh, DRM mode.c, I guess. So this returns DRM ioctal, which does returns erno as the value. Okay, so in our app, we should be able to call like const CRTC ret is equal to this. If CRTC ret is not equal to zero, can we like log what it is? Uh, failed to set CRTC with this error. All right. Give me a clue, please. Negative 28. So can we look for like the definition of like, um, maybe we go into the kernel. We look for like E and Val or something. Like I just want like 28 is E no space. No space left on device. Interesting. Okay. That's quite surprising, actually. Um I wonder if it's like depending on the size of the screen when we start this. Oh, it could be. Could be, okay. Can we go back to a test app? And... Where the fuck were we? Did we have, we have depth size commented out, so we put this back. We get negative 13 now? What is negative 13? E inval, like I just wanna like see. 13, E access, permission denied. Interesting. Oh, cause this is still running probably. So maybe it's cause it's running twice at once. Okay, and then like somebody so clearly pointed out, RCR Stern, or Rick <laughs> uh, he made he was a good point that we need to clear the depth bit. Uh, buffer bit, I think, and we probably also set the depth clear color. And if we're saying that we're using less, I think we clear with 1.0, I think. I might have this backwards, it might be zero. I can't remember. But let's run it and see. Okay, there we go. That is a reasonable uh, initial test. So we, the, the, we clearly have a monkey. We have some like gradients on this thing, which means that the UV coordinate mapping is somewhat correct. Um, and perspective is probably being transformed, like applied and stuff. So we have a test case we can work with now, which is wonderful for us. And now let's just fucking try running, um, on our version of, of like on our GPU. Oops, I shouldn't have fucking closed that. That was stupid. Uh, if we're on our GPU, everything will start falling over. <laughs> we can just start, uh, fixing up as we go. Okay, test app dev DRI card one. This time it's of card zero. No good config. Okay, so this is probably, uh, we are trying to choose a config with these attributes. And I assume that there are no configs with, with a depth buffer. That would be my guess here, which means that our implementation of like a Mesa OpenGL driver has to say somewhere that we support that, uh, which I have no idea how that's supposed to be done. Uh, we'll figure it out. 
So I guess I kind of want to leave this open. Let's get a second shell open with a with the correct environment, and we're gonna have to do some spelunking here. So I guess maybe we could start looking for the string EGL depth size. That might be a good place to start. Um, okay, this is interesting for sure that there's like some sort of mapping here. Where is this like used? Presumably, um, okay. Where is like this used? Key is equal to this. Okay, so they have like, they asked the driver, I guess, about something, and then they try to extract the values based off the DRI attribute that comes in. Okay, so we could probably make a guess here that we want to look at DRI attrib Depth. Um, okay. Hmm, maybe not. I guess maybe it makes sense to... Where does this stuff come from? Where does this stuff come from? We have to figure out where this is coming from. That's the obvious answer. Now, the less obvious answer is how we figure that out. Uh, so maybe we look at EGL get configs. And start trying to see what happens here. So he flattens an array of configs into flattened config. So presumably this is where this stuff is stored. What is this like flattened configs things? He looks at each config. Okay, flatten array takes in like a function for each thing. And calls like flatten for each element in this array. Why? He's converting things into another form. Oh, okay, sure, whatever. Uh, but presumably this like configs thing is where this stuff comes from. So probably here we're seeing like append array is probably the most interesting point here. And we're getting like some sort of configuration here. Maybe not. What does this do? Append an element to an array. So he appends this to configs. Yeah, okay, so he has conf, which comes from here. Which is where we were before, dri2 add config. Uh, yeah, okay. So this seems kind of interesting. What does this come get? He gets like a DRI config. So this is probably coming from platform DRM. Seems very likely. And what are we looking at here? Get shifts and sizes. Green shift, blue alpha, no. Render type float. Eh, it feels like we're in the right area for sure, though. So where is this config coming from? Driver configs. Okay. So where does this get assigned? He calls GBM DRI driver configs. Okay. Which gets set by... which gets set by um 
Actually, not sure. Driver configs. Create new screen. Probably. This probably has like an output parameter of driver configs. Would be my guess here. Uh, so DRI create new screen. Sure, is like this thing. So let's just confirm that we are right. We are right that this is about, this is how the config gets set. And this comes from probably here, would be my guess. Which calls pipe loader create screen, nice. Okay, so the DRI screen, in its screen takes in a DRI screen, and this returns the DRI config. So how does this thing get set? Um, this thing returns this thing, which means that this thing returns that thing. Oh, okay, wait, wait, here we go, death bits array? This sounds promising. Yeah, 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 okay. Then this looks familiar. I think we've been in here before. So screen is format supported. Looks pretty likely to be related. And... Uh, if we don't care about how it works, maybe try setting the attributes in the test app to values that are more likely to be exactly supported. I mean, I think that we just don't necessarily support anything but RGB, BGRA32 or something. I think we were very explicit when we created this thing about what formats we support. Um, isn't this related to the capabilities you set back up when first trying to create a service? Um, I believe so. Yes. Um... Here we go. Wait, this looks promising here. This looks like what we want. So we have these are the options it looks like that it gets from our driver implementation about what is supported. So here are all of the depth. Here are all of the formats that it's going to check if we support in our driver implementation. I think. And I think that we just have to say that we support one of these. Now, which one do we want? Like, this seems fine, right? Z32 Unorm? Fuck it. So can we just, like, take this and then go to our implementation of this? I'm pretty sure this is implemented in, like, Sphero Diarmonsis. Nice. So I think in here, we just say, if format is equal to this, Do we have to do anything special? Maybe not. Uh, he's recalling us with sample count zero. Storage sample count zero. So I think we just add this to the list of things that we say we support. I think that'll do it. That's my guess. So let's see what he says. Uh, yeah, we got a lot farther. Like, a lot farther. So that means that we found... We found a configuration that supports depth now. Huge win for us. And then we are hitting assertions now. Um, I don't know. U inline's 89. What the fuck is going on there? Destination had to be referenced. Interesting. Can we look at like the backtrace here if we run this in GDB? I guess this is not even fixed error compilation. This is like uh fix uh prevent crashing, we'll call it. Okay. So what is happening here? This is coming from Mesa delete buffers. 
Oh, yeah, that's fair. We just uh didn't do that before. <laughs> so we don't support any deinitializing of anything because we're shit. <laughs> and, uh, we just haven't like, implemented that stuff. And it looks like somebody is trying to actually do something about that. So this is coming from model renderer in it, buffer parity in it. Um, sure. Can we just uh, not do that for now? Where is this even getting called from? Either on D in it or on error here. So on bind model error. which I don't think should. Oh no, if this airs out. So something down here fails, then we would crash out, which I don't think we would, but let's just kind of comment this out for now. See if that changed anything. With the right GPU. Um, okay, error vertex shader compile. Okay, so that makes sense. So, what is happening there? This is new to me. I wonder if we're just not correctly setting this like shader compile status. I mean, we were we were checking it before. I wonder if we can say like why. Let's do that. Let's just see if we can get a clue here. Any clue whatsoever? Uh, okay. Uh, right, right. That's a really good point. GLSL three thirty is not supported right now, so we need to downgrade our uh vertex and fragment shaders to whatever the fuck we support for so 120 and then we need to change this to like attribute and then this is varying and then i think in 120 we didn't write core here And then this is varying. And then frag color is built in in this version. All right, let's see what happens if we do that. Let's run it on the other card now. Because we want to make sure that it still works. Okay, we're still chilling there. That's a good sign. And now do we compile and run for card one? Uh, okay, there we go. So program not linked is kind of surprising. Program not linked. Uh, vertex, GLSL. So here, did we have a problem with like varying vec2 UV seems fine. I don't know why it would be complaining about not linking. Program not linked. Because that means that, like, I think there's a way to test this. Uh, we've done this before, right? We call... There's, like, a link program. And we can check the link status and log it as well. So we'll just kind of yoink this back. And we'll do this in the model renderer as well. Uh, so let's see what it's complaining about. Now, linking program failed. Count of uniform locations. Max uniform locations. One is greater than zero. 
Um, so we don't support that. Reasonable. Reasonable. And I think I know where to find that. We've had to like up the number of things we support multiple times in here. And I think it's like vertex. Yeah, pipe shader vertex, pipe shader fragments, max inputs. So I'm assuming that one of these things is like uniforms. No? Hmm. What do you say again? It was max uniform locations i don't know where i want to look here probably here this thing comes from four times no that doesn't look like it because this is hard coded right so this thing is zero for us so where could this become from here probably max shader vertex max uniform fonts yeah 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 So, get shader param, here, this. This is what we're looking for. Max const buffer size over four. So that kind of makes me think it's like return four. Let's just see what happens if we do that. Let's just see. Um, too many vertex shader uniform components. This is giving me like a different log, I feel like. Right? Unless the environment print here is just kind of like messing with us. Yeah, I feel like what we had before was different. Right, if I comment that out, I think that we see that like those all caps logs. Yeah, max uniform locations. Now it's complaining about components of the uniform. Which is probably like I'm uploading like a VEC4 or something. And it only supports like floats or something. So we can probably track that down as well. Yeah, it doesn't rent. Too many vertex... Uniform block components. Um, bum, 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 bum. I don't know, man. Um, too many vertex shader default uniform block components. This field is only set post linking. I mean, surely it's just like another thing in here, right? This is const buffer zero size. What is they do, they do here here? Max const buffer size. Shader buffers, shader images. Eh. Eh. Hmm. What's the easiest way to track this down? I think we do want to... Mm, I don't know. We could just search for like this log straight up.
You know, I think your initial hunch might be worth a shot. Up that four to a size of our uniforms. Oh, yeah, right. That makes sense. So if we do like 16 here, we might see something different. Because what is like the uniform that we're uploading? That's a really good point. That's a really good point. So we're trying to do a four by four matrix, right? So that's four times 16, which is going to be 64. So if we do like 128 here, we could see if that changes behavior at all. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good eye. Good eye. Good eye. Uh, okay. So now he's mad that we have an unhandled number of output vector elements in shader compilation. So what's that coming from? Probably we don't have support for UV vec2 outputs, which is easy to fix for sure. Um, it means that when we compile our shader, we need to put a 2 in both of these. So two, we're gonna say, we're gonna push an output back two. And here we're gonna push an input back two. We're still gonna support both. Uh, which means that we need to update our GPU library. Uh, what the fuck? Oh. Uh, so we go shader C binding. So we have this vec3, we just kind of, whoop, change the three to a two in a couple places. And we do the same for output. Change the four to a two in a couple places, simple. And I guess these need headers to go with them, for sure. So this gets a two and this gets a two, boom. Uh, no field name vec2. Oh, that's interesting. So our inputs, our like whole shader compiler doesn't, or like our whole shader system doesn't support anything related to vectors right now. Um, so that presumably, if I add it, will start falling shit over. Which means we need to do something like this. Okay. That surprisingly works. I kind of expected more pain there, but I guess it's fine. Uh, let's see what happens if we try to build now. Build and run. Uh, okay, so now he's mad at line 175. So he's like, oh, okay. So now we're hitting NUR deref types that we only ever supported VARs before. We're dereferencing, I think, is like, I think, here, we can like print, print the shader. Uh, sorry. We can print the Mesa representation of the shader. And we can try to look for what this is doing. Uh, so probably, Let's see if we can find it. Dref var. So these are probably fine because these are taking in variables, but there's also dref var that takes in a uniform mat four. And I bet you this is probably, oh, dref array. That's probably the problem here. So what in the actual fuck am I looking at here? Holy fuck what? What the fuck? What does it mean? So we're taking the thing that's stored in 11, our transform. Presumably this is dereferencing it and then taking a reference to the first element of it, which is a vec4. I see. So we're storing a reference to the first row or column of this thing. Is my guess here. And so we're gonna have to support whatever the fuck this deref array does, which is fine. Which is fine. 
Uh, this also is surely going to fuck us at some point. <laughs> but we'll get to that later. How do you come up with these projects? Also, how do you even know what goes into a virtual GPU? Like, how do you how to turn code into a VGPU? Sorry, this is a question. Just bizarre to me. Oh, no sweat. No sweat. Um, so I thought it would be fun. I don't know. I just like, you, I just like look at stuff and I'm like, how does that work? And in this case, the question was, how the fuck does a GPU work? I think I, 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 I had the idea that it would be fun to make a GPU for some shitty microcontroller project. And then I was like, how the fuck does that work? And then we ended up here, right? Cause as soon as you're like, how does that work? You're like, well, we have to figure it out. And the way we figure it out is by, uh, trying it right uh and then like how do you know what goes into it uh well i don't is the answer to that we just kind of like <laughs> solve problems one by one <laughs> until we get somewhere <laughs> right so you just go oh this is broken how do you fix that and then you google and you research and the people in chat tell you some some interesting info sometimes and then eventually you have something that works better than it did yesterday and if you just keep getting better than you did the day before then eventually you get something do you do a lot of reading outside of streams to get a feel for what you're going to work on? I do some. Uh, there's like this weird incentive where I think that my streams are better if I know less. So I think that if I come in like really, really, really prepared, it's like you're just watching me fly through something and not watching me struggle. And I think that the struggle is a very important draw. Like... I think that what I'm trying to make is something that represents like the real development experience. And I think that if I just always knew the answer, that would be like insincere and untrue. Um, but if I do no reading, then I just get lost as fuck and the stream like can't happen. So I have to find like a nice little balance of like looking ahead enough to think, to, to see if there will be bailouts for problems that we hit. And there's this like fun little game where you have to try to guess what you can do in a two hour segment, which is a, a skill that has to be honed for sure. Um, major zero stored column major. So transform zero is the first column IRC. That sounds right to me as well. Uh, bigger on the struggle, not just to be real, but for educational value as well. Seeing someone speed run a problem is hard to follow. Yeah. And I think that it's like not really useful and like, also like kind of like increases like the level of like imposter syndrome i think it's just kind of like bad all around <laughs> when when it run look at the task usage and then ask how i can optimize this bingo bango wizards pharaoh says uh i don't think my optimization is very good for the record i think that uh there are people that know a lot more than me know the direction but on the path i guess yeah that's that's kind of what i go for for sure um okay back to trying to figure out what the fuck is going on here d ref array so we don't actually have to do this right now. We just have to encode what information is trying to be accessed here. And I think that what we have here is we have a reference to an array as well as which element in that array we are trying to extract. That's kind of like, the rest of this is just kind of like syntax sugar, I think. So we need a command that handles that. So I think that in our terminology here, I think in our terminology, we called DREF VAR. I think we called it something else. We called load input reference or load output reference. So if, maybe we switch on the DREF type here. And if it is this, uh, you know, we do our typical break. And now we ha also have this other one that's like array. Uh, so I guess we'll write array here. And then default will assert uh, unhandled DREF type. Okay. Now in, we can do what we were doing before here. Okay. 
And then, oops, this is for var. And then for array, we are going to, I guess, push a command called load, like array reference, right? That's kind of how I'm feeling here. Um, and then we go, we're going to have to like extract that thing, right? So we know that we're looking for something along these lines. This is like a command. So we're looking to put something into number 12. So that's this. This is going to say the same. And then I guess the location here is just going to be a little bit different. It's going to be like, we're going to have two locations. One is the array that we are referencing, as well as the index into that array that we're pulling from. Is a virtual GPU better than a physical GPU? I think in no way virtual is better than, than real. Yeah, this is worse in every single way. The only benefit this gives us is that we can do it. <laughs> right i don't have like i'm not gonna whip out the soldering iron and like try to solder the transistors together um eventually like the, the the goal here was to try to understand what a real gpu does so that if we had if we wanted to make a gpu on an fpga which i think is like a reasonable goal i wanted to understand like what that gpu should do and it's way easier for me to prototype in software than it is in hardware and also like this gives me a good feel for like if that's like a feasible thing, right? So <laughs> you don't have TMS, TSMC on speed tell. Yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> um, okay, so I think we're probably looking for like NUR print. Here we're looking for anything that says like DREF array, right? So that's kind of here. And then, then we're looking for an ampersand followed by a bracket and a star and then a reference to another variable. So, um, geez, Louise, man, um, ampersand here, only casts return a pointer type, dref link, here we go, is probably what we're looking for, so, Um, geez. Here, this is probably what we're looking for. So the array component is the array dot index. Instr dot array index, okay. And then like, what else is in this array thing? Just inbounds. So I, I would guess, just if I had to like fucking pull it out my ass, I would guess that the existing driver location is valid, is valid still. And then we just need to look at the array index. Uh, which was instr array. So this is kind of my guess for what we're supposed to do. And maybe it makes sense for us to print that for now. So we can say uh, dref array has parameters of this number than this number that's kind of all we think that we need for now so this is going to be the driver location and the dref array dot index okay let's just kind of see what happens if we do that now we'll kind of comment this out for a second and then he is mad that like Driver location is an unsigned int. Index is an unsigned nurse source. Oh, interesting. So we probably want to go nurse source SSA index would be my guess. I think it's this. Okay, let's just start there and see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Uh, dear for it, zero fifty six. Um, seems wrong. <laughs> seems wrong. And then he says unhandled iad, which would be here. 
Yeah, so... It seems like it's li likely... This? And we're just getting it wrong, so... Interesting. Um... Okay. Oh, because driver location is, I think, actually... For specifically for like input outputs, yeah. So, if DRF type is not DRF var, it's probably this. Since it's not DRF var, we probably look at the parent. Yeah, this feels like another likely candidate. Um, so dear for 11, that's good. So we found the 11. Now we have written 56 here instead of zero. Oh, this is maybe this constant zero. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. This makes sense. So here they might be using this constant zero, zero, one, two, three, right? That would, that would line up with zero, one, two, three, right? It could. So we might want to resolve the SSA here. We don't want to go like while, like does this thing have like a parent? It does. Instruction or in statement that consumes the value as a source. Uh, it's not really what I want. Okay. Okay. So that seems fine. That seems fine. It's like a little surprising for sure. But we'll make it work. So we basically want to take whatever we printed here and paste it here. And now we just now we know that um our implementation of this thing is going to have a reference type that comes from array. Hmm. How do I want to represent this? This feels like he's taking like this looks this feels very similar to like extracting one float from a vector. It feels a lot like that. But maybe not. So we're referencing another variable. I guess we have like sub variable. Kind of feels like. So this takes like an index, which is Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So the variable, we, we were referencing a... V yeah, it does feel like it's this. It does feel like it's that. So how do we do channel references here? We have a command that's like move for channel reference. But can we just do like load channel ref? And he's going to take in... He's going to be like, I'm going to output to this IDE and I'm going to take in a channel reference. That feels like it kind of works. And then when we are our shader C bindings, we're going to have to do like load channel reference who takes in Who takes in the uh, source source and sub index or something? 
I don't know, man. So, yeah. That feels kind of right to me. That feels kind of right. Maybe. I don't know, man. <laughs> um, so this is load channel reference, is that what we called it? Load channel reference, yeah. We had ID, source, and sub index. All right. Uh, okay, now obviously we need to implement this thing for it to work. So load channel ref is going to be like, I'm gonna take the thing and I'm going to say this is a reference to something else okay which means that here we have references in here and I guess we just have to say like channel reference as well like this which means that we can do channel reference is equal to l dot reference Okay. Chillin. Uh, we need to have channel reference here. Okay. 96. Uh, he's mad because some index we made a U8. Can we just turn this up to U32? does seem like he's totally fine with that and then does that mean this build will build again he does okay now certainly usages of that thing are gonna fall the fuck over but figure that out later, later. um so there's no i add where i assume i add is just integer add why the fuck are they adding <laughs> 97 to 56 to make 98 I don't know, but that's kind of funny. Uh, but we can just implement that. So I add looks like he's just taking in two floats or two integers, sorry. Oh, which kind of means that load const probably needs to support integers as well. Um, yeah, that's gonna be a problem for sure. That's gonna be a problem because I think that we read somewhere that like the shader, the like the intermediate representation doesn't support, like he doesn't have like floats and ints. He just has like bitwise types. And then the type of the instruction determines whether or not you interpret that thing as a float or an int. Right? So this I add and will have to be like, oh, this is an integer. So that means kind of like, This thing needs to like cast comes later. Right, should, this should be like like this should just store that it's four bytes and cast when necessary. Yeah, it seems reasonable seems reasonable but we'll we'll get to that later well i guess we can't really because if we're trying to implement iad we don't really have a choice we don't have a choice but i don't know man we'll figure it out we'll figure it out 
we can just uh, stub the functions for now. Right? And just be like a uh, panic unimplemented. Right? And then figure it out later. <laughs> uh, okay. So, where the fuck we have fmall? Can we just do I add like this? Okay. And then wherever we input this thing. Uh, just go like f mall i add boom okay which i think should build nice and then in mesa we should be able to be like if we have an i add we should be able to be like i add boom oops Build sh. This slash these. This should apply to vec n as well. Regarding the fix me. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, so we have an assertion at two hundred six now. Uh, I I mean, but we'll we'll figure it out. Like I'll, I'll I'll notice when we get there. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. Um. Okay, I see. So there's a new intrinsic function. Probably this load ubo vec4. What the fuck does this thing do? So he's taking the thing in 98. Load ubo vec4. He's taking the thing in 109, 0. And the thing in 98 zero and he's making that thing 110 and then he's multiplying that by 71 which is the position position dot x x x x okay Let's look at another version of this. So then we do load ubo vec4 with 111 from 101, which is now taking the, which now is the index 1. And he's multiplying by y, 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 z, 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 z. So it sounds like this is trying to do. Um, they're taking like their vector x, y, z, w, and I think they're trying to say like x, 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 z, 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 z. Right? They're trying to they're trying to extract like a column from this. I would assume, right? So like one fourteen here. What is 114? This is a vec4. What is 71? 71 is our position. What the fuck does a vec3.zzzz mean? He's duplicating the same value four times? Why? What the fuck does that mean? Thirty two x four is like a four by four output for to a four by four matrix. That does seem reasonable to me as well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So is he like? We have our transform. This is number eleven. The first column of this thing is twelve which we can think of as like an individual strip that a vector will be multiplied by, I think. I think I have that right, because they're stored column major. Unless this is row. Oh, I think I'm seeing it. I think I'm seeing it. So 
Uh, let's ignore the fact that I have to think about like row major, column major right now. I don't really want to think about that. I think what I'm what they're doing is they have the vector of our position, right? Pause. And this is x, y, z. If you have a four by four matrix that you're trying to multiply this by, they are being tricky and they are extracting so so the normal the normal thing you would do is you'd have like um you'd have like one two three right four five six seven eight nine right and you would multiply like x by the first column y by the second column z by the third column and then you sum them this way to get like this would be like x plus 2y plus 3z, right? You gotta go like horizontally adding this way. Now what they're doing is that they're taking this x component and they are extracting that four times. And I think that means that they have to extract one column of this matrix so that they can do the one, four, seven, 11, all at once. So they're kind of like storing this as like one, like x, 4, x, 7, x, 11, x, right? Then they do this again, but for the second column, they do like the 2, 2, 5, 8, 12, right? Or whatever. I guess it should be 10 and this should be 11 or something, right? And then they, they multiply all those by y at the same time and then add that to the, to the output. They're doing like an accumulation. Right? So that's why the first one, you see a multiplying of x, 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 x. Then for the second one, you see a multiplication of y, 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 and they add it to the other thing. I think I understand. I think I understand. So when they're saying load ubo vec 4, this is extracting one slice of the, of the thing. I think. Um, which means that our fmol is going to have to support, um, uh, multiplying, like, a swizzle, like, a, like a duplication, I guess. Um, which means that over here, we have to do a fix me here. Fix me. Uh, A and B might not be F32s, essentially. Uh, these may be, like, swizzles of existing variables. Uh, okay. That makes sense. So, then if that is true, what the fuck does this intrinsic do? He takes one slice of the array. I guess it depends on like what low, maybe we can like see what this thing does. I don't really understand what like load ubo is. Uh, Mesa load ubo. Is UBO like the is UBO a name for something? Is that like uniform buffer object or something? Um UBO. Cause we have like vertex buffer objects, VBO, that's like a thing I hear sometimes. Hmm. Not sure. It is near uniform. Uh, yes, see above. Oh, did you say this already? Uniform buffer object, people already guessed that. Yeah, that seems reasonable to me. That seems reasonable to me. So we're saying, we're trying to load from this uniform buffer object. Oh, because, um, 
the reference needs to like it, it might like we need to know which part of storage to pull this thing from i guess but we can we can figure that out ourselves because we know from deref var transform we know at this point that it's a ubo so we can kind of just kind of like lose that context and that's probably fine 11, 12. Oh, uh, no. I'm missing something here. How transform here is a uniform. But this thing doesn't tie back to the uniform anyway, right? 97 and 56 are just constants. So that's where this like 98 is coming from. And then 109 is also just a constant. So I guess that this must be looking at the fucking memory of a buffer object that's been bound, right? We could make a guess here that um, when you upload a uniform, that goes into some memory somewhere. And this could just be pulling from that memory. And it looks like based off what we're seeing here 101 is the number one right so it looks like the size of this thing is inferred by the instruction right so we need to move by some amount in some direction right it's hard for me to understand right now if um i'm struggling with the column major ordering of OpenGL, I don't really know the shapes of their multiplications, right? Because you can kind of like, you can kind of like write these multiplications a lot of ways. If you're, if you're writing, doing like matrix, four by four matrix times like this, I think that's different than if you write it the other way where you do like the row on the one side and the four by four matrix on the other side, I think. And then like, then there's also the fact that this thing might be stored in memory this way first, or this way first. And I think that, like, is unrelated to, like, the difference between these, I think. So I'm having, I, I really struggle to think about this stuff, for sure. But maybe for now, we just pass on the parameters, right? So we can make a guess here that these inputs is like base like maybe which which buffer object would be my guess and the offset within that buffer object maybe would also be my guess now what's confusing to me here still is like why where does like percent 12 come in like literally nowhere Which makes me wonder if this is, like, the final version of this. Because this thing goes through, like, multiple passes, right? I'm not really sure. Because, like, why is this still in here if it's completely unused? You know? I don't see any percent twelves anywhere. So this is just, like, a fucking useless thing to, to have. Hmm. Hmm, 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 Yeah, not sure. Okay, let's just let's just run it and say that we're gonna have this load from Ubo, and we'll pat we'll give it two parameters, and we'll just say we don't know what they are yet. <laughs> I think that's reasonable. I think that's reasonable. So I think we want like load ubo. And we're gonna take in 
A and B, and we'll just be like, I don't know what these are yet. Okay. Which means that our C bindings, I guess we need to say load Ubo vec4 to match, right? Because we suspect that the types here are important. We don't know, but we suspect. So then we're going to be like, push load ubo vec4, and I guess we'll say A and B. And where he's going. Right, because everything gets stored somewhere. Okay. Um, could we use to set up some state before touching the variables reference? Maybe to infer their types. Um, but the thing is, like, maybe I kind of see what you're saying. That like this percent twelve does kind of do something. Like it like. It, like figures out this is a ransom, but I really doubt it. I really doubt it. I'd find it very hard to believe that this does that. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's, it. It seems more likely that it's just like we haven't run dead code in dead code elimination. I wonder if that's something that we can do. I saw when I was like grepping, like I was just like looking at other driver implementations. Um, I think I was looking at the Asahi version. Which I guess maybe is like Gallium. I think I saw them calling like NUR, like passes on the NUR output. I'm trying to think where I would have seen that. It would have been like in whoever is calling this compiler shader. It would have been in like create VS state somewhere, right? I would have seen this in Virgil. Why don't I see anything that looks like maybe it was AGX? Yeah, here, Asahi AJX. So I think I saw in here that they call like extra passes. Pretty sure. Pretty sure I saw that. Yeah, NUR pass V here. So I wonder if we need to run some sort of like NUR pass ourselves although i guess you could argue that they're calling like specific things for their gpu and if they're doing that then they have to do like some extra lowering themselves where lowering is like a word i don't really understand uh the parameters after registry reference is zero zero for the first load ubo vec before right i would guess it's something like location zero each uniform has a location to observe why opgl from the cpu and offset zero the first vec four in the first column i would agree with that that is my guess as well that is my guess as well um i would like to like get rid i, I like it'd be sick if we could get rid of like unnecessary computation Remove dead variables. Can we, like, is there maybe a reason that we have to do that? Can we, can we do it? I wonder. remove I guess it's possible that like SSAs are not the same thing as variables 
And I also don't really understand why, if this has to get done, it seems like they would be done everywhere. I saw Virgil takes TGSI as state or something. Maybe that's similar to work with. I, get, I would guess that Mesa already passes you as someone optimized an error, but I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, that would be my understanding as well, right? Because we do see, we do see that, um, we see like the vertex shader printed multiple times, right? So here we're actually, we, if we just like kind of scroll here, we can kind of see what passes our run, right? So we just keep, we keep going, we keep going, we keep going. It's doing so many things. Keep going, keep going, right? we see like hey he's calling lower vars to ssa and here's what we get after that and he's going to remove dead variables this this right and then he, we get this stuff and kind of interestingly that like percent 12 doesn't show up here oh it does here never mind oh wait these are maybe different shaders fuck can we only print the uh vertex shader for now Maybe that will help us. Okay. So like here, we go like lower uniforms to UBO. So before that, this called load uniform, right? Oh, this is maybe interesting. I wonder if we want more high level commands. Do these lowering things make things, like, more complex for us? Seems possible. So this does, like... Okay, let's see what happens in this remove dead variables thing here. So this is, like... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ish. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, that doesn't really seem any different. To be honest. Okay, but like, I mean, we can see that there's definitely like some stuff going on there. There's definitely, they're definitely doing some passes. It just bothers me that we have to implement this deref array function for no fucking reason. I'd prefer not to. Can we see what happens if we just call like remove dead variables? Like, is that like a thing we can do? I guess variables might be like only the externally visible things but ooh i think i saw remove dead drefs i do see that existing so can we call that and just see what happens So it's ner pass v shader ner remove dead drefs. Right. Does that change what we see at all? That'd be kind of sick. That would be kind of sick. Yeah, it does. We see that like DREF array gone. So why? <laughs> I guess that's fine. I guess that's fine. I wonder if, like, how are these, like, lowering passes, like, decided? Right? Like, who is deciding to call something that converts, like, this uniform, load uniform, to load UBO? Because I'm not going to say, that, like, 
I'm not claiming that I want one or the other, right? It just kind of like, I would like to know why and if that's something that we can choose to not do. That feels kind of interesting to me. So this is coming from lower IO. No, it's coming from a lower uniform CVVO. So how, who decides to call this? Um, can we do like TGSI to NUR, NUR to TGSI, GLSL to NUR. And this comes from like an options on this thing. So who decides this? This comes from NUR shader compiler options. Uh, so can we look for like, surely this is getting called like on get compiler options, which maybe is like not necessarily we don't have like an implementation of that thing. Which means that a caller of this thing checks it. So we could choose to turn that off if we wanted to. Right? If we go into like, what is it? It's get compiler options. Uh, I think it's on screen, right? Right? We could choose to do this. And then we could like implement like a, a function here. Uh, like this. And like, what's this thing supposed to do? Oh, wait, hold on. This is a void star. Never mind. I'm confused. This, that was specifically for soft pipe. Um, no, I'm confused. So if this is true, Nurse Shader Compiler Options. Yeah, where is this fucking used? Yeah, so I got confused here because we have soft pipe compiler options. which must be passed into something somewhere. I guess maybe the void star is depending on if we want NUR or TGSI. Yeah, okay. Sure, so maybe this is used, we can try it. We can try it. So we can just do something like this, right? We'll do what they did, Sphero. Sparrow DRM wins this. I just want to see. I just want to like see see if I understand. And we're just only going to turn off this thing. What's like the default? <laughs> what happens if we don't have this function? Uh, okay, let's first let's just see if this has the effect that I think it will. And the effect that I'm hoping for is that it that at the end the final thing we get has a load uniforms instead of load ubo, which it does, right? So that means that we like successfully turn that shit off. Um, and I guess the void star is because it like could be one. It, we could be getting like TGSI compiler options, I guess, right? Now, I want to know if this thing doesn't exist, right? This thing will have some sort of like default behavior. So we're probably looking at like something like this where we have like They use the default one, NUR to TGSI compiler options. Unless we ask for something else. So, right, we could do like,
wherever the fuck this comes from. Right, we could we could initialize this thing and then edit it with our overrides. Um Yeah, okay. I think I understand a little bit. Um I guess we can just do those defaults. I like understand now. What I don't really understand is why we have to call remo like remove dead references ourselves. That still feels a little weird to me. But maybe it's fine. Maybe. I'm just surprised it had an effect. Because I would expect that anybody who's like going to remove references would have all would have called that after. And this is kind of like how I'm thinking, but I guess it's fine. I'm okay with doing this, I guess. Who else calls this? Yeah, maybe somebody just missed it. I mean, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, okay, which kind of means that that like DRF array thing doesn't need to get implemented right now. Right, so we could get away with doing this now that we've removed dead DREFs. Okay, but we are seeing something at 206. He's saying, hey, are instruction type intrinsic? Oh yeah, we just never implemented the load UBO thing. So I guess here we should do switch on intrinsic, intrinsic. And we're gonna have like ner intrinsic load DREF, right? Who's just gonna call this. We're gonna have store DREF. Who's gonna call this? And now we have our new function. Uh unhandled uh intrinsic type. Okay. And then we have our new type, which is load ubo fec4, right? Uh, which we said we implement. I think we implemented something here. We we said load ubo fec4 shader c bindings. We have load ubo. We don't have it. Ubo. We did. We did add it here. So we're just changing this to load channel. This channel turns into ubo vec4, which we had as a and b, which we suspect are going to be offset and object, but you know, we can, we'll get there eventually. I think it's like this. All right, ID A B, ID A B, yep. Now we need to actually stub out impl implementation for that thing, which we don't know what it is yet. So can we look for like, just like I add and just do, maybe we even do else here, just to make it so I don't have to think about these implementations right now. Okay. And now we need to push command libgpu shader push command load ubo vec4. And we have to figure out where these references came from, which we haven't got to yet. So load ubo vec4. 
we need to look for some sort of like print print intrinsic probably in print ner and ner print intrinsic okay so he has the name and then his arguments just come from print source at source i okay so looking at two two sources here seems reasonable and then we also have to store the destination which is stored by like def index most likely okay sure maybe maybe uh unhandled alu op which is kind of surprising we have fmall fmad fad iad we should probably print what it is we do that's kind of cool of us fad oh yeah i guess we didn't implement fad did we did we so the i turns into an f here and i assume everything else is going to be the same i assume who fucking knows but seems reasonable so can we just do this and then do this okay and then do this well all right seems reasonable to me what are these overlays you keep adding and changing your personal projects or something else uh i don't know what you mean are you talking about like when i go like this find files it really depends on what you mean by overlays i'll answer if you <laughs> give slightly more detail apologies for not understanding um okay unhandled num components for load const okay so it looks like we got through the the vertex shader it looks like we have a vertex shader that's compiled stream overlays game applied ones oh these yeah yeah those are uh those are personal projects yeah um there are four like I don't know. I find them like fun to look at when I'm watching the stream back. So I feel like some other people might like that too. Uh, this one, it comes from spheraphoria.dev. The idea here is that um, these are each chamber is like a WebAssembly chamber and users can like submit chambers. Um, so some people, like some of these are by me, like the vacuum is mine, the guy walking is mine, these platforms are mine. But like this portal one is like submitted by someone. And like this, like vortex is submitted by someone. The pool table is submitted by someone. Like the filter and like the ball bouncy one. These are like submitted by people. Um, and you can choose to submit one if you want. If you go here and you can kind of read through what you ex what is expected from these things. And you can try to make one and you can see what happens. They're kind of fun. Um... Okay, so it looks like we go through the vertex shader, and we are now struggling on the fragment shader. Um, and it looks like we're like unhandled DOM components for load const. So this load const now is a vec2. Vec2. So I guess probably we probably had like something here that's like load constant F32, and I think we just need to go vec2 here. Seems reasonable to me. Load constant. Are you a C programmer? Um, I don't really think that like classifying yourself as a programmer for a specific language is a valuable way of uh, thinking about yourself. So. I, ha I can program in C. I don't know if I'm particularly good at it. I've never worked on C professionally, but I've written a reasonable amount of it. 
I think that there are probably things about writing in C that are other gotchas that I'm not like super familiar with, but I'm also sure that I would figure them out. I don't really think that C is crazy complex. Um, I would say that I have a fair amount of experience with low level for sure. Um, but yeah, I think it, well, depending on your definition of low level and experience, I guess both of those things. I would say that I would apply to a job that works in C. <laughs> we'll put it that way. <laughs> what kind of software do you make? Well, right now we're making a virtual graphics card and that should give you a pretty good clue <laughs> as to the type of shit you should expect to see around here. Uh, but just kind of whatever we feel like, man. We do whatever we want, which is pretty fun for us. Uh, okay, Vec 2 presumably is going to look a lot like Vec 4. We can make a, we, we could make a little guess. We could, we could infer. Um, and then hopefully that's good enough. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see what we've worked on in the past, um, you can check out the YouTube link in the Twitch description. And there are a bunch of things here organized by playlist for different projects. So, you know, QR Geek Decoder, Operating System, TV Tracker, like, I don't know. There's like a lot of stuff. Just whatever we feel like, man. Debugger, kernel module to process projects. Like, whatever whatever we feel like. Isn't that for your job? Um, it would, that would involve me having a job, which is a little bit, um, <laughs> a little bit of a stretch to call it that right now. So, uh, I guess you could say that everything you see us do is hobby, which is fine. It's fun. We do things for fun around here because programming is fun. It tickles little worms in my brain that like to solve puzzles. Um, okay, what's going on here? We're segfaulting on upload constants. So, I would assume here that constants is going to be the uniform buffer. I don't know you, that's why I'm asking so many questions. I think that's fair. That's fair. I'm not claiming that you should know me. I'm giving you the answer to your questions. I don't know what you want from me. Uh, ST Adam cons buff. Okay. So we are at line 186. Uh, okay, so set constant buffer. What are we looking at here? What are we looking at? This is from upload constants. Can we get like a clue here? Prepare draw. Probably... Pass the given program parameters to graphics pipe as a constant buffer. My guess here is that these are uniform objects. Yeah, we see stuff references to like uniform bytes in here. Um, which seems pretty likely. Can we at least maybe we should at least implement the function that it's trying to call? And we can kind of log what we get in it and try to like make a guess about what that is supposed to do. So this is on the screen i think not the context yeah. oh this is on the context that's a surprise i would have guessed screen um but that's okay so let's look at our context creation context creation context creation context creation so it seems like we need to implement this function okay uh that's going to call PC set context. What? Co constant? Yeah, there it is. I've never heard about zigs that extension of C. It's just a different language, man. It's just a different language. Uh, it's pretty close to C, kind of like hand wavy. Like it's about. I don't really know how to like describe it. It's 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 similar to C in a lot of ways. I would say it's more similar to C than C plus plus is. Uh, in my twisted view of the world, for sure. Um, okay, I guess we can look at like another implementation of set constant buffer and try to t take a guess at what it's supposed to do. So if we look at like the no op version, he does nothing, of course. No op does nothing. That's not a shocker in the slightest. What about like the ver GL version? Um, sure. So he like writes a constant buffer. So this is probably like a GPU upload it feels right right like he said oh maybe so here he calls like set uniform buffer and just with the offset and the size and i'm not really sure that the 
data in here is actually transferred at this point, or if it's just telling us to, like, if it's just giving us a reference. Pipe concept buffer tells us the actual buffer, which is a pipe resource. Aha, okay, okay. So somewhere he asks us to allocate a buffer. We allocate that buffer somewhere. He's going to copy that data to the GPU via whatever like APIs we've given to the calling code to transfer data. And then before it calls into the draw function, it tells us which buffer is bound at which index? Mm, that seems reasonable, seems reasonable. Um, okay, so if we just like do this as is. If we just do this as is, what happens? Fail to set CRTC, fuck you. <laughs> I'll run it again. <laughs> We will run it again. Okay, so now we have assertion on handled vertex attribute format. Okay. I'm just gonna make sure we didn't like accidentally not commit something. Yeah, we're still on, we're still on. Uh, so 532. Uh, so this is probably like inputs to our vertex shader. So what is going on there? We probably in our model renderers call like set attributes somewhere and it looks like we bind something that is a vec2 and a vec3 probably yeah vec2 and vec3 so presumably we just don't we just didn't support one of these here yeah we only have four three and one so presumably if rgba is a vec4 rgb is a vec3 and r is a vec1 or like a single float Surely the vec2 is rg, right? Surely. <laughs> uh, surely, yeah, uh, wgg has the same guess, nice. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is going to be, what is this code doing? It's like telling us the buffer format of the data that's being passed to the GPU. So this is shader input defs push. Shader input defs. So we just kind of go, we take, just take this same fucking function and we just write back to in here. <laughs> uh, I wonder if there's like, C bindings are like kind of funny. I don't really know if I think that I'm doing this wrong. We are doing like a lot of copy pasting and like a, with like kind of like boring data marshalling stuff. But I do kind of feel like I really like the idea that like these like C APIs are exposed in this like entirely simple way. And like internally we get to choose how we want to represent the data. Like there's something that feels kind of nice about that, even though it means that we have like functions that just look like this. It's like, what the fuck are we doing when you see this? But then when you use it, it feels kind of right. It feels kind of right. I don't know. Um, Build. Let's see what's up. Okay, wait, that's a good fucking sign. Okay, so obviously he's not, like, rendering anything reasonable, but this is, like, really fucking sick. Mm, shouldn't he be crashing? Oh, he's not crashing because um the zig code is... F right, we are failing to parse... We're failing to parse the input shader so we're just not running it but it means that the shader compiled successfully i'm a little bit confused about where the uniform buffer stuff is i don't remember implementing any code to do uniform buffer upload but i guess the existing res gpu resource creation must be kind of doing it by mistake it's probably that the existing like we're probably hitting the buffer path here Probably, uh, I guess we should probably check what the type is. But presumably we're generating something from this. And then I guess when we're calling like, I'm, I'm surprised we don't have to call like bind constant buffer. I guess set constant buffer is probably the same thing here. So probably here we need to do something related to that. 
And then probably when we call draw, I would assume that this like shader pipeline exec must want to take in like UBOs, right? That would be my guess. That would be my guess. But we've been at this for two hours. I think that this is like kind of like a good place to call it. I know that there isn't like a nice pretty thing to see at the end of the stream, but I think that we did accomplish a fair amount. Like, in reality, like, the diff for this stream is quite small, right? But I think that we, like, it. there's a lot of, like, understanding that we kind of work through today. Specifically, like, this, we, we, we've, we've encountered a lot of new instructions in our shader. So, what was it? It was print vs. Right, so we've seen a lot of new shit here, right? And we kind of like, what we, we covered like a little bit of U, uniform APIs. We're not really 100% sure on this. I'm sure that we will have to explore this a little bit further tomorrow. Um, but we, we see like, we, we hit some like NUR passes, right? We saw that we were hitting like dead code and we're like, what the fuck? We ran a NUR pass there to get out of it. Um, then we, what else? We, 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 we were looking hard at this like load UBO function. We're not really sure what this is yet. Um, but I suspect that we will figure it out fairly easily. So yeah, I think, I think we call it there. I know it would be nice if we had got something visual on the screen. Um, but I think to do that, we'd have to run for like another hour and I don't want to do that. So, um, Good place to stop. I think that we have to, uh, uh, we've got like got a, a bunch of stuff to think about for tomorrow too. Like the fact that we now know that um, floating point and integer values are kind of represented the same way in memory. And we have to like do this like bit casting down the line that we're not doing right now. We also have to add support for this type of access on like an FMOL, which is going to be kind of interesting for sure. And then like this load thing, but it actually seems like the the amount that we have to implement to make this work is actually not a lot, right? The only things that we have to implement are the, this iAd, this fmol, which now takes in like this thing, and then extracting a vec4 from this load ubo. But I think everything else almost comes for free, which is pretty fucking crazy. Pretty fucking crazy. So I think we'll take a run at this tomorrow. So today we got through the point where user space now doesn't fucking crash. And uh, we'll have to tackle we'll have to tackle actual usage of these APIs tomorrow. So thank you for watching, guys. Um, if you like what you saw, we stream most days at around twelve thirty Pacific time to four Pacific time. It's four o'clock Pacific time now, so anywhere between three and a half hours ago and now is when you would expect to see me. If you are um, watching live, if you're watching on YouTube, you are seeing what is a two hour VOD from two to four, and you might be like, "What the fuck? That's not twelve thirty to four. Um, that's because we kind of do a one and a half hour segment when stream starts that's kind of like um if i wanted to stream something that i don't think is easily convertible into a youtube title and thumbnail then i might do it there and so we'll do things like take garbage code that we wrote yesterday and turn it into something that's like committable we might do like some research and stuff we might do um like one-off kind of small little testing things you know we might you know it's just kind of like supplemental content i call it if you want to watch and follow along like the project the two to four segment that you see on youtube is great enough but if you want like extra stuff um those happy hour segments are archived on patreon and their youtube member streams um code for this will end up on github under the gpu testing environment repo so there's a link for that in the twitch and youtube descriptions um but it's just the same name if you don't want to click them um, I think that's the usual plug stuff out of the way. And so I think it is time to say goodbye to the YouTube folk. And Twitch, let's find someone to raid.